Hi guys, it's Sock and today I'm going to show you how to reverse stamp, specifically reverse stamping with a silicone nail art mat. Um, so to start with, I'm just going to be prepping my mat, which is the Bundle Monster Lotus mat, and the link is in the description box below. Um, I'm going to be prepping this with a two-in-one clear top and base coat. I find a two-in-one is slightly more flexible than a standard top coat, so it actually helps when you're coming to remove your decals off the mat. So what I'm doing is just applying that to all of the areas on the mat and I'm just going to wait for that to dry for about 10 minutes. I'm now going to take my first set of stamping and I'm using a Born Pretty plate, again link in description box below. And I'm just going to pick that up and stamp straight down over the top of the now dry clear polish, one after the other, so that I've got all my designs in place. As you can see, I'm just taking it slowly and using a clear stamper just so I can see exactly where I'm positioning the design on the clear polish. I'm going to take a very, very fine brush. This is the fine detail brush from Nail Artisan and this is absolutely perfect for colouring in small decals. So all I'm doing is I'm just dabbing a small amount of polish onto the nail art mat and then I'm just going in with the small brush and colouring in my design. I'm going one colour at a time on each decal here just to show you um, how I normally go about colouring these in. What you can actually do is just do all of the colours um, in one go, so all of the pink together, all of the blue together, all of the red together, etc. Um, you don't have to do each individual one uh, separately, you can kind of be a little bit more effective with your time. Um, for the purposes of this video, I'm just going in and doing each individual decal um, as I go along. Um, so for this cute little cat, as you can see, I'm kind of just picking out some red, pink and some eventually grey um, on this one. You can get as complicated as you like with colouring these in. You can add patterns where there are no patterns, for example, so tabby stripes maybe for the cat. Um, you can get as creative or as, as simple as you like on these. Um, it's just really important to make sure that you colour everything in and obviously with that grey you can just see I've gone over the top of everything. So try to pick the first colours that you use as being the ones with the smallest detail and cover with the rest. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip that up to show you while these are drying and you can see that the reverse side of these is really nice and neat. Um, so what I'm doing now is just popping on a white base um, to then go and do the base for my design here. So I'm actually just going to create a really simple gradient to go underneath these nails. Now I hadn't intended on doing a gradient tutorial um, but I have just done this quite slowly so you can sort of see how I build up the colour um, and the colour blocks across the sponge. It's really important to try and use a latex free sponge if you can get hold of one and um, just purely because it tends to hold the polish slightly better. Uh, some of the latex sponges are a little bit too uh, non-porous and you end up with a big pool of polish and you end up sort of smishing it around all over the place. So after applying a bit of liquid latex around my fingers I'm just going to dab that on the nail. So I'm moving from left to right to start with and just rolling the sponge gently across the surface of the nail and I will then go in and do a couple of coats. Uh, it very much depends on how opaque your polishes are as to how many coats you need to do. Um, the polishes that I'm using today are not too bad as you can see but I'm just going to go in and maybe do a second coat just to make that dark blue really really nice and visible on the design. Some people do dampen their sponge before they do their gradient, I prefer to use mine dry. Um, it just depends on what you're comfortable with. Um, I know some people do struggle with picking and little pieces um, of their sponge coming off on their nails. Um, personally, I've never experienced that, so I'm quite happy to use a dry sponge with a little rolling up and down motion, as you can see here. So now they're all done, um, all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start to peel up my decals. I've left them to one side to dry for about 10 minutes. And as you can see, I'm using a pair of long nose tweezers for that. They've got a very, very fine point on the end um, and they're quite oversized. This makes it easier to slide the tip of the tweezers underneath the decal to pull them up. So as you can see, I'm just gently going along the long edge of the decal and then I'm just gonna get a good grip on it and gently pull. Now, the flatter you go against the mat, the easier it's gonna be. If you start to pull directly upwards, you'll put a bit too much tension on the decal and you'll end up ripping it. Just pulling gently from left to right is enough to ensure it comes up neatly. And as you can see, that's just come up there um, with all of the extra around it. So I'm just going to position that on the nail. As you can see, I've done a little bit of stamping underneath this design already. Um, and if you want to check out my stamping tutorial, um, that will be in a link at the end of this video. Um, so I'm just patting that into place and just smoothing it out, making sure there are no wrinkles or creases in the design. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, a small metal cuticle tool like this. And I'm just going to go right the way around the design, um, around the cuticle area, just to get rid of some of that excess polish around the decal. 
You can trim clear decals like this to size. I just find it's a little bit of a waste of time seeing as I'm gonna go in and do this step anyway. Then all I'll do is just take my tweezers and just peel off the excess around the edges. Depending on how long your nails are, you might need to then just go in as I am here and just pull off the excess around the tip of the nail. That's why it's really important to make sure that your polish is dry when you do this, otherwise you will end up dragging the polish as you're trying to um, pick off the extra polish around the nail. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this again with this little cute narwhal design on the end. Just very gently peel him up off of the backing and then I'm just going to apply him to the nail. So I'm using my tweezers to position but you can quite happily just pick them up with your fingers once you've peeled them off the mat and position them wherever you like. And obviously as before when you're happy you just gently press down and make sure there are no creases or bubbles left underneath. It doesn't matter massively if you do end up with a couple of air pockets because we are going to go across with a clean up brush anyway. But again, I'm just going to take the cuticle pusher and just gently cut around the edges of the design to get rid of the excess clear polish. Done. So the next thing you're going to do is just go in with a clean up brush. Now this is um, an oval clean up brush from Nail Artisan, again the link's in the description box below. And all I've done is I've just soaked that in nail polish remover and I'm just going to go gently around the edges of each of the nails just to seal the edges of the decal to the nail, paying careful attention to the tips and ends there just to make sure. You can skip this step if you've been quite neat, but sometimes you'll find there are little ragged edges um, where you've cut the decal to fit the nail. So it's really important just to kind of go around very gently with a clean up brush and a little bit of either acetone or polish remover and just smooth all the edges down on the nail. This will stop your design lifting. Um, obviously we will top coat this design anyway, but it's quite important at this stage just to make sure that everything is smooth and even. You can also clean up any air bubbles. Um, you'll see in a minute, I just kind of tap the edge of my uh, little finger here um, as I'm going round. There is a little bit of a crease, which I don't know if you can see on camera, but there is a little bit of a crease on the end of this nail. So I'm just smoothing that out very gently, just enough to take the clear layer of polish off, but not enough to disturb the design underneath. So finally, it's time for some top coat. I'm just going in with Seshvi as always, and just top coating the design. When you top coat reverse stamping like this, you can be a little bit more aggressive with your uh, application because the polish is obviously trapped underneath the clear layer that you pulled up. Um, obviously I'm being a little bit more gentle because I have got some direct stamping on underneath the reverse. And obviously it's quite cool that you can mix and match both to get a bit of depth to your design. As you can see, the single stamping does give a little bit more dimension to what I've created. This is just a little bit of a silly design really. I know it's a little bit wacky, but it does help to kind of highlight um, exactly how to create reverse stamp decals. Okay guys, so that about wraps it up for this tutorial. Um, I hope that you enjoyed. Um, please do leave me a comment or any feedback uh, in the comments below. And if there's anything else that you would like to see me do a tutorial on or try, um, please do let me know and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.